In this video, you'll see how to set up a table with formulas. So when you select a region from a drop-down list, the table shows just the employees from that region. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com. You'll see how to create this workbook from scratch, but first we'll take a quick look at the completed copy so you can see where we're headed. First, we have a drop-down list with region names, and that comes from this list of regions. There's a table with formulas, and it's going to show just the employees from this selected region. There's a table here with the employee names and the region in which they work. A formula here is creating numbers, and at the top, another formula shows how many employees work in the selected region. So when we choose a different region, the numbers here will change, the numbers here will change, and the same at the top. There's a sample file on my website that you can download, and it's a start workbook. All it has in it, there's a list sheet, and then there's a typed list of region names, employees, and the regions that they work in. So you can download that, or you can make a list of regions, employees, and then assign each employee to a region. And once we have the list typed on the worksheet, we're going to change each of these lists into a named Excel table. To do that, I'll select a cell in the region list, and on the Home tab, click Format as Table, and click on the style that you like. Check the range here, and make sure this box is checked to say that my table has headers. Click OK. Select any cell in this list, and again, Home tab, Format as Table, select a style, check that it's got the right range selected, this box is checked, and OK. So now we have two tables, and we're going to name these tables. If you select a cell in the table, you'll see a Table Design tab at the top. Click that, and at the left you'll see a table name where it's been given a default name and I'm going to change that. So the one I'm in now is the region table, so I'll call it TBL Reg. Press Enter, and now I'll do the same. I'll call this TBL EMP. I'll select a cell, Table Design, TBL EMP. So now we have two named Excel tables. Next, we're going to create two named ranges. The first one will have the region names, and the second one will have the employee names. To create a named range, I'm going to select these region name cells, not the heading, and click in the name box. It's showing the name of the table, but we're going to be naming just these cells. We're going to type a one word name here, reg list, and when you're finished, press enter. And the same thing for employees select the employee names, but not the region names or the headings. Click in the name box and type EMP list. And press enter to complete the name. And now in the name box drop down, you can see EMP list and reg list. And we'll use those names later. Next, we'll add a drop down list of region names in cell B3. So select that cell, and on the Data tab, click Data Validation. And we want to allow a list, and we want the source to be that list of region names that we just created. So I'll click in here and press the F3 button. That shows the names that I've created. I'll click Reg List, OK. Or you could type equal Reg List yourself and click OK. And now we have a drop down list here where we can select any of the regions. I'm going to format that with an outside border and I'll put green fill just so it stands out on the worksheet. We're also going to name this cell so it's easy to refer to in formulas later. And I'm going to call it reg cell, meaning region selected. And press enter. And now that name also appears in our drop down list. Our goal is to create a list of numbers here and the names of the employees from the selected region. 
The next step will be to add a new column to this table where we can number the employees from the selected region. Currently East is selected and we would want a 1 here and a 2 here. I'll type a column heading list num and when I press enter the table expands automatically into column K. In cell K4, I'm going to type a formula that will start by checking cell B3, which is reg cell, and see if it's the same as the region name here in the row where the formula is. And if it's not, we're going to put in an empty string, which is just two double quote marks. So to start, I'll type an equal sign and if. And that's going to let us test something, have something happen if that's true, something else if it's false. What we want to check is does this region match the region over here? This region is cell J4. We want to see if it's not equal to, which is less than, greater than what's in B3. And when I click that, it'll put the name in for us and a comma. So if it's not equal, I want nothing to appear in this cell and that's an empty string, two double quote marks and a comma. So if that's true, there's no match, show nothing. Otherwise, we want to take the highest number that's in the rows above this one and add one to it. And to find the highest number, I'll use max. We always want to start in row three. We're in column K. To lock the row, I'll do a dollar sign and three. And then down to the row above, which in this case is K3. So right now the maximum would be a zero because text has a value of zero. We want to add a one. So I'm going to put a sum in front of the max. And then go back to the end here, type a comma and a one. Bracket for the sum, a bracket for the if, and press enter. And now it's filled down automatically and you can see the one here and the two. And if I change this to central, there are five people there, so it's numbering them. And I'll go back to east. And just to make these easier to see, I'm going to center that. Next, we'll put a formula in cell J1 that gets the highest number from this column and that will tell us how many employees are in the selected region. So we'll put a label in I1, type number in region. You can make that bold, control B, and then select J1 and we'll type the formula in there and it's a simple max function that will get the highest number from the list number column equal max, open bracket, and click at the top of the list number column and it will select all the cells that contain data in the table and it shows the table name and column name here. Close the bracket and press enter. And here it has a two. If we change it to central, the number is five now. I'll go back to east and I'll format this with a border, gray fill, and center it. I'm going to name this cell now so we can use that name in the next formula. With the cell selected, click in the name box, type regnum, and press enter. Now we're going to create a table where we'll see a list of matching employees. We'll have numbers down the first column and employee names in the second column. We'll start with headings. We're going to use num and emp as the headings. We'll format this as an Excel table. So select one of the headings and on the Home tab, click Format as Table. Select a style. Make sure to check the box My Table Has Headings and click OK. I'm going to name this table as well. And now that we're in the table, you'll see the Table Design tab. Click in the Table Name box and call this TBL Emp Read and press Enter. There are going to be formulas in both columns of this table. The first one will create a list of numbers from one to whatever this number is, and then we'll pull the name of the employee that matches that number by looking here for the number and over here for the name. To create the list of numbers, we're going to use a formula that's very similar to this one. 
We'll use sum and max again to get the highest number and add one to that. But instead of using if to check one thing, we're going to have two ifs to check two things. I'm going to make these columns a little bit wider and then we'll start our first if function in this cell. Equals if open bracket and the first thing we want to check is if the cell above is empty because if it's empty we don't need any more numbers. D3 equals and then two double quotes for an empty string and a comma and if that's true then we want an empty string in this cell too. So two double quotes and a comma. And next we'll check if the row above is equal to this number, which means that was the last number, so this cell should look empty. We'll type the if, open bracket, D3 is what we're going to check. Is that equal to number cell here, which is called regnum, comma. So if it's equal to that, two double quotes and a comma. And then we're going to use the sum max combination to get the next number. Sum max, the cells we're looking at will be starting in D3 always down to the row above, D dollar sign three colon D3. Close the max, then a comma, and we want to add a one to that number, then a bracket to close sum, and then two brackets to close the if functions and press enter. Now we want this table to go down as far as the employee table. We could go a bit further if we wanted, but at least that far. And when I drag down, it fills in the second number here because we have two employees. And if I select central, we get five numbers. In the employee column, a formula will pull the name for the employee that matches this number, looking in this column for the number and here for the name. So the main part of this formula is an index match combination. We'll look at the match first and it's going to look for this number in here and then return a number that tells us where that is in this group of cells. So equals match. We want it to look for the number from D4 comma, and it should look in this list number column, comma, and we want an exact match, and close that bracket. So it found one in the first cell in the lookup range, and it found two down in the seventh, and then it didn't find a zero anywhere, so it's returning two because it gave up at the second row here. So that part is working, and now we want to use index. I'm going to type that in front of match, we want it to get a name, so I'll click on employees, comma, and then I'm going back to the end here and close the index function. And now it found Al and Gil, which are the two names we need, and it's filled in whatever was in row two, so we're going to get rid of this problem. Now we want to get rid of names in any row where there isn't a number. So at the beginning, click right after the equal sign and type if open bracket, we want it to check if cell D4 is equal to an empty string, double quotes, comma. So if it's equal to an empty string, then put an empty string in this cell, comma. And now go to the end and close that if we get what we need. And then to test this, I'm going to select central. We have five numbers and five employee names. And for West, we have six. Thanks for watching this video. You can go to my website, contextures.com, to get this workbook. And please subscribe to my Contextures YouTube channel so you can see the latest videos as I post them.